Hi, and welcome back to our course. This is Section 3, an overview of TFS components. In this section, we're going to look at the Agile Management Tools, Developer Tools, Source Control Tools, Builds, Testing, and Release Management Tools. In this first video, we are going to discuss the introduction to Agile Planning Tools. In this video, we're going to look at the Agile Methodology, Scrum, Kanban, how to track your project, and lastly, how to scale it. So in the first part, we're going to talk about the Agile planning tools. We have the ability to create a backlog with the Agile tools and then manage those backlogs by creating and managing iterations, those time boxed events that you're going to work in. And we have the ability to create child work items. So normally you'd have user stories in Agile and you could have a child item of type task associated with that. And you have the ability to prioritize your work as needed so that the item with the most business value or the most benefit to the, to the project can always be put on top and you can reprioritize as you go. So with that, let's take a look at the Agile tools. All right, so now that we've talked about Agile, let's look at it in action. So this is the Agile backlog in TFS. You can see I have a few epic work items here and there's a little chevron here which I can click on and that will expand out to my feature, to my user stories, my defects, all within that particular uh, chain or hierarchy of work items. And I can create these hierarchies and reprioritize them uh, as much as I need to. Usually we have an epic to a feature and a feature to the user stories and then user stories usually are tasked such as this one where it's tasked out and would have one to many tasks associated with it. We over here we have the iterations that we're working in. So here's iteration one, which is our current iteration. It's a time boxed set of, of days. So here you can see it's a 15 workday iteration. Um, we have a few different user stories in there that have not been tasked out yet. So we'll go back to the stories for a second here and let's collapse these all down. And one of the things I have the ability to do is to actually turn off the hierarchy. So by going over here and showing the parents to turn this off to hide, I get a list of all the user stories now. And these are the things I really care about when I'm doing the uh, prioritization, let's say, because these are the items the development team is going to task out. And very easily I can grab one of these items and I can drag them around within the list and I can reprioritize them. Again, the order is the priority in which they need to be done. Once I have a good prioritized list, it doesn't have to be all of it, but good enough to start, I'll be able to take these and put them into particular iterations. So that goes to iteration one. We'll put this one in there. We think we can do that. And that's how we build out the iterations um, that we're going to work with. So we have stories, we have a backlog. We have the ability to see the hierarchies. We have the ability to create tasks within those hierarchies. So for example, I could go into the iteration here. I can click on this green plus and I can add a work item task to the actual user story. Let's save and close that. And it just shows you there's a task now associated with that particular user story. And these are the, the tasks are what we're going to add hours to. And that, that will build, start to build out charting within and reporting within TFS. And again, as we go into the future iterations, we can load those up also. So that's pretty much the Agile methodology working in TFS. All right, so let's talk about Scrum in TFS. Scrum is different than the Agile in a couple of ways. First off, we manage what we call product backlog items or PBIs. Okay, so PBIs fall into on the visual here right under features and just before tasks. So normally the flow is you have an epic, you create an epic, you create a feature off that epic or a number of features, one to end features. And then off the features you create product backlog items or PBIs and then off each PBI you task them out into a certain number of tasks. Again, the defects or bugs can be tracked the same way as they were in Agile and are associated with tasks. But you always hear on the issue tracking side, it's called an impediment instead of an issue. We can also manage sprints within TFS when it comes to Scrum. And sprints are the time boxed events that we're going to work in. Normally, when I work with teams, I like to use two to three week sprints. 
okay? You can go two to four weeks, somewhere in that range if you choose to, but I like to keep them either two weeks or three weeks sprints. They seem to be the best for most of the work that I've done with companies. So yeah, that's the better way I think to do it, although you can go to four. So just, just so you understand, two to three is the you know pretty normal. Four is a little bit on the outside there. You can also manage your work in the task board or what they call the scrum board. And again, that's a visual board that you can then, electronic board that you can use to track the work. And you can set up your own columns and swim lanes and all that within there. So you can create a nice backlog board. And then during your standups, that's part of a scrum process, you have a daily standup. During this daily standup, you can bring up the board, you can see what people are working on, you can move things through their you know, PBIs or tasks through their desired states that they're in, whether it be a doing, a done, you know, committed, accepted, whatever the case may be, you can track all that and manage all that within the electronic board. The other nice thing is that stakeholders that want to look at the project can come in and look at the board and they can see what's being worked on. They can look at a backlog and see where's the items that I'm looking for, you know, the ones that are important to me, where do they fall in the backlog? You know, when will they be worked on? And, and the, some of the things that are being worked on, they can see, okay, how close are we to being finished for each one of these? So with that, let's go look at Scrum as it works in TFS. Okay, now that we talked about Scrum for a little bit, let's look at the Scrum, how it's implemented within Team Foundation Server. Again, it looks very much like the Agile, and we have a backlog. The difference here is we're not using user stories, but we're using what we call PBIs, or Product Backlog Items. Okay, and that makes up our backlog, very much like we did before in the Agile. Again, I can drag and drop these into their particular order for prioritization purposes. The difference between the sprints and uh, the iterations is the sprints are in Scrum. They're a time box set of work that we're going to do, very much like an iteration that is in Agile. Same thing, it's just we call them sprints in Scrum. Okay, so if I click on a particular sprint, we can see what was worked on in that particular sprint, and we can expand it, and it's got tasks uh, in there that are, belong to the actual product backlog item. And we can see over here, we have a certain amount of work that we've done, work by activity or work by assigned to. Again, if we fill out that information within the work items, we'll start to light these up with different information. So for example, if we go into the current sprint, sprint six, and you will notice here that I have a couple of PBIs with some tasks associated with them. You can see here we have eight hours of work, 10 work days. That's a total of uh, 60 hours in my case, and I'll, I'll show you why that's 60 hours. And here we have the work by assigned to, so Paul Hacker has a total of eight hours assigned to him at this time for development work. In the capacity, we can actually list out the individuals on our team, and we can assign the amount of work they can do every day. So my capacity on a daily basis is usually six hours, give or take, with meetings and other things that happen during the day. I can probably get six hours of solid work done on a typical day. Okay, and if I have to take a day off for any reason, I can put those in here too and adjust the capacity that I'm going to be able to work in. And again, if there's any team days off, we can account for those also. But by adding my users and adding my capacity, I start to drive this information on the right here, these work details. The last thing I want to look at is the board. This is the sprint board. As you can see, we have our product backlog items on the left side here. And in here, we have the tasks with certain columns. We have a to-do and progress and done. And we can actually drag these to particular states as they get worked on. We can actually change ownership of this to someone else if necessary. We can change the amount of hours that have been completed on it. So you can see you can quite do quite a bit. It's quite interactive in the backlog board. And a lot of times I'll pull this up during our daily standup and see where people are at. And I can group it by people or I can group it by product backlog items. So a lot of times I'll just group by the people on the team and say, okay, it's your turn. Let's talk about what you did, what you go, what's going on. And, where you have any uh, issues. Let's go back to the product backlog items here. And uh, again, when we're done, we can drag them over into the done column. So I could say I'm done with this one. You'll notice it zeroed out the hours. 
here. It didn't actually close anything though. So you have to actually set the, the PBI to a finished or done state. Right now it's committed, um, but you'd actually have to change that to it's done now. Uh, because we finished all the tasks in that particular work item. It doesn't automatically happen because you finished all the tasks. And that's one thing to understand. So that's how Scrum works within the Team Foundations Server framework. It's, it's very similar to what uh, Agile does, except that you have a little more uh, action with the board in this case. All right, so now let's talk about CMMI and TFS. That's the Capability Maturity Model. And it doesn't get talked a lot about in TFS, when we're working in the system because most folks are working in Agile or Scrum. Not many are using the CMMI process, although you can in TFS use CMMI. So let's talk about that for a second. You can see on the work item flow here, we have epics and features just like we do in Scrum and Agile. But now instead of uh, product backlog items or user stories, we have a requirement. Okay, and the requirement is associated with a task. So again, it flows all the same, requirements, then you task out the requirements. You have your defects or bugs and your tasks are associated the same way. But on your issue side of the house, you have a lot more issue tracking that's available. And that's one of the things about CMMI is it's really, there's more information, more reporting, you know, more, more issue tracking, more, more of everything within CMMI that we can track and manage and report on. So, for example, we have change requests. So every time there's a change that comes in, in most systems like Scrum or Agile, you're not going to use a change request. You're just going to put the new changes in the system, reprioritize, and then work on them. Uh, CMMI is a little more rigid than most, and so for that, we have a, a change request that we're going to have to manage. We have reviews as a, as a work item. It's an, an issue, so we're going to work on that through a review. And we have, we have the issue work item. And then lastly, we have a risk. So can we manage our risk? How do we mitigate risk? Things like that. So again, you can see CMMI is, is a lot more rigid, a lot more work items available to it, which means more reporting can be drawn out of the system. So you can do a lot of the same things on, on the backlog in TFS that you can do with the other two processes. And you can map these requirements to features and epics to features and all that. So again, it will work the same way in a lot of ways, except that the types of work items and the number of work items are going to be different. So with that, let's go look at CMMI as it uses it in TFS. All right, so let's start looking at CMMI. I'm in my TFS server and we have our work tab open for our CMMI demo project. You'll notice over here on the left, we have features, we have requirements, and again, iterations, very much like was done in the Agile framework. Then we have our backlog and our boards. The first thing you'll notice here is though, is that we have a requirement type we can create in the requirements section. So we can give it a title. So we can call this um, Rec2. And then you have the ability to tell it what type of requirement do we want to create here. So is this a, a business objective or is it operational or is it functional? So you have different options, quality of service. Again, there's a, there's a lot more options available to you in the CMMI template and when you're working with their work items. So let's say quality of service and we'll add that. It automatically adds it in and it's now saved in number two slot. And we can actually go and click on the green plus and we actually create a task or a bug associated with it. So we can call this the, um, the Rec2 task. And you can see we have a lot of different information available to us, like the priority, the triage, blocked. Here's the disciplines that we can assign it to. So again, when you compare this to other work items that we've used, it's a, it's a little more information that you can enter. It's not as lightweight as Agile or Scrum. And then here we have the actual estimates of work here that we can track. So let's save and close that. Now we have a requirement and a task associated with each other. So the task is the child of the requirement. But the one thing we want to do is make sure that we tie our requirements to our features. Okay, so we have one feature in the backlog for features, and that's the demo feature. And what I want to do is I want to go over to the options over here, 
and I want to click this mapping on okay and what that does is it allows me now to go and map the requirements to the features with a simple drag and drop so you can see there's my feature I can grab this particular item drop it on top of the feature and you can see down here you have select successfully mapped the requirement one to the demo feature one so now we have a relationship so we're going to turn off the mapping we're going to unhide or not show the parents and then turn it back on again and we'll see now our task is associated but if we go up to the feature level now we can see the whole relationship so there we go we have demo feature we have a requirement associated with that feature and a task associated with that requirement and again we can go out and recreate defects we can create other types of work items with this so for example I can go into the iterations and we can start to look and see is there anything in the iteration we have no dates associated with so we can create dates but we also have the ability to add more work items straight to the the iteration that we're working in you'll notice that it's iteration zero and iteration zero is normally the first iteration you go through on a project where you're maybe getting things ready maybe you need to stand up some servers maybe you need to you know get some software whatever the case may be build out a machine that's what sprints or iteration zero is for is basically getting ready to set up for the project so we can start diving in on iteration one so that's pretty much how we'd work with the CMMI template within TFS. All right, so now let's look at the Kanban process in Team Foundation Server. Again, very much like Scrum, we have a board, but in Kanban, we don't have iterations or sprints or time boxed events. It's more of a pull the work as you need to type of methodology. So the process is when you put your items in the backlog, you will pull the ones that you know the next one that's in the list that's prioritized for you to work on uh, you have the ability to work what we call swim lanes so swim lanes are lines that go across the projects so each state backlog analyze develop and test there you can see we have an expedited swim lane we have a standard swim lane or a default swim lane again you can rename them whatever you need to and we'll talk about that in the video we also have broken down a column into doing and done so I can take my committed column let's say and I can make it into a doing done type column and we'll talk about that also it also makes for easy prioritization very much like scrum or agile we can drag and drop and prioritize as needed so let's take a look at the Kanban process in TFS all right so now let's look at how Kanban can be utilized within team foundation server when we create our project we don't actually have a Kanban template that we are going to use to create the project with we're going to actually use the agile or the scrum template to uh, and then work with the board in a Kanban process so you'll notice in the board one of the things we won't work with is sprints or iterations they're there but we're not using them in fact we probably wouldn't even set them up and if we're going to go Kanban from the start then what we do is we actually create product backlog items I don't task them out we just have product backlog items they're in the left side here and they get dragged over as they're being worked on into the approve column once they've been approved then we can start to bring them over and commit it it is not time boxed we just pull what's next and start to work on it okay we can prioritize here so we can bring these around and this is the priority in which they'll get pulled into the approved state once they've been approved again we can then take them off the top next next person next task next PBI grab it start working on it and again we can prioritize the approved column also you'll notice we have an expedited swim lane these are called swim lanes this is the default swim lane and this is the expedited swim lane and all this is saying is this work has to be done quicker so maybe we are going to address the expedited items first and get those done before actually moving on to the uh, default approved items and again it's very much the same way we can drag it to the committed column and we have a doing and done so we basically split committed into a doing and done column and as we're doing we can have it doing and when we're done with the particular uh, item product backlog item we can actually drag it over into the done column I've also added another column called blocked um, which we can use uh, for blocked tasks as well as the done column when everything is actually done done it's been tested it's been 
looked at, it's been reviewed, everything looks like it's going well with that particular task and it's finished. It's a, met all the acceptance criteria that's been put into it. Let's just actually go ahead and, and close it out. Well, that's what we'll put into the done column. So when I use this do, doing done column, this done tells me that it's ready for validation. Somebody needs to verify that the acceptance criteria has been met. Once that's happened, we can just bypass the block column and put it right into the final done column. So that's how you work with Kanban within Team Foundation Server. Next, let's take a look at how we're going to track our project in Team Foundation Server. To track it, we're going to use customized dashboards. We'll look at how you create a customized dashboard and you create multiple dashboards, in fact, if you need to. We're going to look at the work item charting, the availability of these charts that can be produced from work item queries that interrogate the system and return some charts, very much like the one you see on the left here. And live tiles, the ability to have your dashboard have these live tiles so that when you click on them, you can go into certain aspects of the project right from within the dashboard. It's really cool. So we're going to take a look at that also. So let's go take a look at how you're going to track a project in TFS. So let's look at now at how we're going to track the project that we're going to be working in. So whether we're working in Agile or Scrum or even Kanban, we can track those projects on the dashboards available in Team Foundation Server. This is a dashboard for my particular project, the Mercury Health, that I've been working with. And you'll notice we have these different sections. And here we're talking about work items, what's currently being worked on. We have two tasks, two features, and four other ones. We can actually create new work items over here. We have our team members where we can add more team members. We can actually go through and click on these one of these links here and, and go into that particular area, the task board or the backlog board or the queries, the work item queries that are available. We also have the ability here to request that feedback, which we talked about earlier in this uh, series. We talked about getting feedback from the stakeholders. That's how you would go about initiating that. And then down here we have, again, some test trend, re test results and uh, sample data that we can actually add to the project. So you can see you can track a lot of different information here from that project management lead point of view. I want to see where my project's at. And this is something that you can put up on a big screen monitor or a TV or something and have it displayed along in the development room for everybody to be able to see where's the project at at a given point in time. I also have the ability to add these widgets. So if I go down here and I click on this little pencil and then this green comes up, I'm going to click on that plus and I can actually go in here and I can look at different widgets. So for example, um, chart of build history. Maybe I want to look at the, the build history. So I can click on add that and it'll add that down here. We're going to close it. We're going to go back and quit editing it and then we can actually go in here and configure it. So it'll ask us to pick a build definition. So let's pick the continuous integration. Let's see how the business delivery is. Oh, there's a better one. So we'll use the continuous delivery one. And you can see every one of these, these are all what we considered live tiles. And every one of these is a live tile action we can take. So for example, I can click on that particular item. It will take me into the build summary for that particular build definition for that particular build that was ran and give me all the information. Again, easy way to track the project. I can see in here some test results. The, the project build status, how long did it take? Uh, here we can look at the code coverage that's happening and any deployments that were part of that particular build. So you can see a lot of different information and we can go right back to the overview dashboard to get back to where we just started from. Again, we could do the same thing with the live tiles up here too. Uh, we could go into the tasks and, and Let's say we want to look at a particular task, it'll open up, we can get all the information about a particular task, edit it, and close it again. Again, all right from within the dashboard. The other thing we have the ability to do is create these custom dashboards. So I'm going to go to the DevOps dashboard I created. You'll notice here it's got a lot of information regarding the builds and releases of the software that we're working on for our project. So you can see here we have the, uh, again, the, con the continuous delivery build chart and we have the continuous integration build chart. We have some statuses of builds. We can see when the what version of the CI build or what version of the CD build ran, when did it run. 
And down here we can see a deployment status. So we have a dev, which is red, meaning the build completed, um, but it failed. So here we have one in uh, the environment and the dev environment that passed 100%. And then we have one here for uh, the dev environment that failed again. So you can see we have a few different ones. Um, here you can see the release status of each uh, build that we deployed. So here we have release 85. You can see release 85 started off in dev. It went to QA, but that's where it stopped. Currently we have release 75 in production. So again, I could actually go in and click on these, go to that particular release that took place and get some information regarding that particular release. You can see here a post deployment approval is pending for the QA environment. So once I do the approval processes, I could push it right into the production environment for deployment if I chose to. So again, it's a very quick way to be able to look at a lot of the different information that we need. And it also gives us a way to to break down that information into custom dashboards that are available for each user to have. So the developers may have a dashboard, the build engineers would have a dashboard, the project management might have a different dashboard altogether. So it just all depends. The last thing I want to look at is the queries. And you can see we have this assign to me query and the queries are just ways to interrogate the work items. Um, we also have different ones here like defects for example here's a list of all the defects one of the things I can do is I can create charts off of these so it's gonna I click on the charts tab I go to new chart we're gonna group it by the current state and we can say okay and it creates this chart for us so again we have one committed and four that are new or three that are new I should say with a total of four work items and I can add this to the dashboard so let's say I add it to the overview dashboard Let's go back to the overview dashboard and I can actually drag these around. There's my defects chart. Let's uh, edit this. Let's drag this up here. Put it right there. We'll drag this one back over here and leave it there. And I think we're done. And so there you can rearrange your dashboard the way you'd like to see it. And again, these are live tiles that we can click on and go into. So with that, I, that's the uh, way to track your projects within Team Foundation Server. And I hope you got something out of that. Thank you. Lastly, let's show how we're going to scale the project. In order to scale the project in TFS, we can create what they call multiple teams. And we can use separate dashboards like we showed you in the last video. Uh, that way we actually broke out and created a DevOps dashboard and a default overview dashboard. And again, a dashboard per team. So maybe you have a DevOps team, a database team you know, a user interface team. Each one of those can create their own customized dashboards that we kind of showed you in the last video uh, with the dashboarding. So there's nothing really different about it. But that's the ability for us now to be able to scale this project as it goes out to multiple teams rather than one specific team. So with that, I'd like to wrap this section up. We talked about Agile and we showed you some of that. We talked about Scrum. Kanban. We showed you how to track the project. We also talked a little bit about how you scale out the project.